Hello everyone, welcome to the class of AI and today we'll be discussing about classification and evaluation metrics. In the current world, uh, a lot of people do data science and machine learning and what is generally seen among a lot of students and you know or among the data science practitioners that they generally get confused in that uh, they have their trained their model and they now want to use some kind of evaluation metrics to test that how good their model is performing and there are a lot of terms uh, such as confusion matrix type 1 error type 2 error accuracy recall precision f beta cohen and kappa roc auc score and pr curve so these are some common evaluation uh, metrics or classification metrics but generally we get confused that which metrics to, to use where so what we have we have did in our class of ai that uh, i have designed a kind of a graph or you can say a kind of a tree where you can see a classification is given at the top that you know that your problem is classification problem and what you want to do that you want to basically uh, whether you want to do a class level or the output is a probability so class level for example it is coming as cats and dog zero and one red and white or black and white or you say covid not covid or maybe cancer not cancer so these type of class labels are there right so the first question before you come uh, to decide what evaluation matrix you will use we'll first go to check whether we are doing classification or not if we are going yes we know we are going to do classification then what type of class labels we have and then the next question is whether we have a balanced data set or an imbalanced data set if we have a balanced data set we can go for four type of uh, measures confusion metrics we can calculate type 1 error which is false positive rate we can calculate type 2 error which is false negative rate and we can also do accuracy it's all depend upon you what you want to calculate and what is the interest of the problem. If you have imbalanced data set, we can go for F1 score, which is sometimes called F beta because beta will beta is the value one, which define whether it's a F1 score or F0.5 or F2, or generally there are other two type of matrices which are known as uh, precision and recall. But if you get probabilities out of the, for example, in your last layer of your deep neural network model, uh, you applied softmax function, right? And in softmax function, what it's giving you, it's giving you a kind of probability that I'm 80% sure that uh, this is a cat image or I'm 20% sure this is a dog image, you know? So you are getting out of the probability. And in such cases, what we can do, we can plot ROC curves, we can do AUC and we can do PR curves. So in this video, uh, what we are, we will be discussing mainly about uh, this type of class label and a balanced data set and imbalanced data set before we proceed uh, what we need to see that uh, there are some prerequisites which we need to see so the first condition uh, what we say positive condition so for example you have a data set and in the data set you have a patient's record and in that case there are some positive records and there are some negative records so positive generally we say the number of real positive cases in the data so the people who are suffering from covid let's say and negative the people who are not uh, suffering from covid right so these are positive cases and these are the negative cases then we come for some true positive false positive true negative and false negative let's try to understand what is this so true positive is the sick people currently identified as a sick so for example you have 100 uh, patients and among 100 patients you know you have 80 let's say covid patients and out of that 80 covid patients you identified 80 correctly so those are true positive cases first positive cases so for example the, the people who are uh, healthy so for example they don't have covid and your test uh, identified them as a covid patient so that is known as false positive and you can see you where your false positive is lying there your false positive is lying over here that actually they are negative but my test is saying that they are positive so that's why it is other side around of the this uh, hyperplane or you can say a kind of a boundary or a shield right next is true negative that healthy people 
are correctly identified as healthy so for example the people who are not having covid and your test is also saying that they don't have covid right so that case are known as true negative false negative is another case that sick people are incorrectly identified as healthy so for example someone is traveling uh, through a flight and they have taken a pcr test you know and uh, what happened that the pcr test came negative that but the actual patient is having a covid so that known as false negative and those false negatives sometimes are very dangerous and where fails false negatives comes you can see over this area these cases are false negative that means the person was having covid but it is the test is showing that it is no, the, the person is not having a uh, covid right so the first thing what you can do is to calculate the accuracy that what is the classification accuracy so let's see how to calculate the accuracy so accuracy is basically what we do generally we say what are our number of true positives what are our number of true negatives and we'll divide it by the sum of true positive true negative false positive and false negative so let's see a scenario that classification accuracy is the ratio of correct prediction upon total prediction so these are the correct predictions so people who are having a covid and the people who are not having a covid and the test is also saying that they are not covid so that those are true negative so we sum them so let's say out of uh, out of 100 samples 80 samples were corrected uh, predicted correctly so our accuracy is 80 percent we can give it with the help of a percentage if you multiply it with the 100 you will get 80 percent accuracy you can also calculate error rate so for example you are saying 0 0.8 is my uh, classification accuracy rate and if you want to calculate the error just subtract it with one so you will get 0. Uh, 0 0.2 so that means that will be your error case but the problem arises with classification accuracy when we have uh, when you have more than two classes in your data so for example there is a cat dog and a buffalo with three or more classes you may get classification accuracy of 80 but actually you don't know if that is because of all class classes are being predicted equally or whether two or more classes are being neglected by the model so for example i have a data set of image classification and in that image classification data set uh, we have uh, buffalo images cat images and dog images and when i train my model what happened that 80 percent of the focus was given on the let's say the more focus was given on the uh, buffalo image then my model is biased toward the buffalo image another point is there when your data does not have even number of classes so for example you have a data set of thousand images let's say of cats and dog right and among that uh, thousand classes you have 90 uh, percent images of your uh, of your cats and only 10 percent of the images belongs to the uh, dog so in such cases what happens that uh, in such cases what happens that uh, your imbalance will come right we'll take a pause here confusion matrix is a summary of your classification problem output and in other words uh, it shows uh, the way in which your classification model is confused when it's make the prediction or we what we can say that uh, it shows that what are the errors are being made uh, by your classifier but more importantly it also shows the type of error you have in your model right so let's let me show you that here we have a true class here we have a predictive class that what we got the prediction as i have told you before also that if something is positive and we have predicted positive then it's a true positive if something is actually a negative and we have predicted is negative it's true negative and if something is actually negative and we make it positive it's a false positive results right and if something is actually positive and we predict it is negative it's a false negative so sometimes of uh, what i have seen uh, people get confused sometimes they put predicted classes over here some side they put true classes over here so let me sketch over here that sometimes what happen that what students do that they put true classes over here and they put uh, 
predicted classes over here. So in that case, a true positive will again remain here. The true negative again will remain here. But the side which will be switched that a false positive comes this side and false negative will, uh, sorry, false negative will go this side, right? So it will be switched. So be careful how you are trying to see whether you want to keep true class up or you want to keep the predicted class uh, in the on the left hand side right so now let's see with the example of uh, with the help of the example of uh, example two class classification problem of predicting whether a photograph contains a cat or a dog so what we have said we have created a record of 10 uh, records a data set test uh, with the expected outcome and the true outcome and we are having we will be using imagine a classification algorithm such as maybe you can say svf or a random forest so here in the first uh, list you can see we have a y true that means uh, what is correctly the image is and as an output we are getting in the model as y pred that means your prediction results so dog is being predicted as dog dog is being predicted at cat and etc etc so if we have these two we can easily calculate the accuracy score we have to use scikit learn matrix accuracy score so you get this accuracy score you pass in a parameter y2 and y pred multiply it with 100 if you want in a percentage the results we get it's 70 percent similarly you can produce a kind of a confusion matrix for that you have to use sklearn matrix and you have to import the function called confusion matrix again you use confusion matrix y true and y pred label i'm telling that uh, means the first label is my dog in my confusion matrix and the second label is cat so what i want to tell you over here that once uh, the matrix will be created like this so the label will decide who will go up so here the dog will go up here the dog will go up cat and cat so it will it will be become like it will become like that right so now uh, if I clear this drawing, right, let's see if I plot this confusion matrix, uh, what will happen is uh, we have plotted this and with the help of this plot, the confusion matrix is saying that we have true positive of four, we have a uh, true negative of three, we have false positive of two and a false negative of one. And we can easily uh, plot this confusion matrix with the help of uh, Seaborn uh, library and we are what we are doing we are using a heat map we are passing our confusion matrix over here and label i'm telling i have told you already that label we have decided dog and cat so here we kept dog here as a cat here is dog as a cat and then we plotted it and it's showing like that that four dogs were there and they were predicted uh, actually as a dog right and initially there was uh, three cats uh, you know three Cats are here, cats are here, these are true negative, and these are the cases of false positive, and this is the case of false negative, right? So now uh, you can see over here, correctly predicted dog as dog, correct, incorrectly predicted dog as cat, correctly predicted cat as cat, and false negative is incorrectly predicting cat as dog. Now let's move forward and uh, let's take an example of COVID versus non-COVID. In that case, what we are doing, we are using another function called classification report. We'll be using confusion matrix and we'll be also doing accuracy score. So again, similarly, we have created two lists, y true. So that means the first list is a true variable. And uh, this is, we are pretending that these are the output which we got from our prediction model. So initially what I'm doing over here, I'm simply using my confusion matrix function, I'm saying, that this will be my label zero, this will be my label one, and I'm printing a confusion matrix. Then uh, there is another function in the confusion matrix. If you use dot rabble, right, you can easily see that what is coming into your true negative, what is coming into your false positive, false negative, and true positive. Don't change the order because in scikit-learn it is written like that, and we can print the result. And you can also print uh, the classification report also. So what we are doing, we are uh, basically 
I'm printing three things over here. So if I take it from here and put it here, and let me comment it at the moment, this particular part. So in this, we are first printing a confusion matrix. Second, we are printing the true negative, false positive, false negative, and true positive. And then we are printing the classification report. So you see over here what we are getting. First thing is what we are getting as a confusion matrix. Second, you see over here as a true negative is the first parameter. And in our matrix, uh, the true negative is a four. So it's coming over here because we are printing true negative first. So you can similarly plot all the things. Now classification report, which is very important. You can see we are considering COVID and non-COVID. In COVID, uh, we are getting several results. Precision recall F1 score is just, it's just, uh, I mean, it's basically, we, it's a binary classification problem. So we generally don't need it. But uh, what we can see, we are getting an weighted accuracy of 70%. We are getting an accuracy of 70%. So you can see over here that uh, if in, in the previous example, we have calculated the accuracy score. So sometime if you don't want to print the accuracy score, you can simply say CLF report. You can print the classification report and you will get your output, which is showing here a 70%, right? Another important point which I want to show you and which I want to focus is we always aim to reduce false positives and false negative. So that means in our in our classification uh, confusion matrix. So if I uncomment it and plot it, you can see uh, over here. So this is my false, uh, sorry, true positive. This is my true negative. So these two diagonals, like these first block and this. So our aim is to reduce these, whether this is false positive and negative. So our ultimate goal is to reduce these two numbers as much as possible, right? And uh, those people who don't want to use an inbuilt function, what we have provided you that we have using a scikit-learn matrix function. And with the help of uh, math, importing math and pandas, we have written our own function of matrix, uh, you know, that how to calculate each and everything. So, you know, I have just calculated the confusion matrix with the help of scikit-learn. And then uh, we have calculated population, prevalence, accuracy, precision, and negative predicted value, FDR, FOR, recall, false, uh, positive rate false negative rate so we have written a customized function for you if you want to use that you can use that as well uh, so you can see that it will give you everything uh, very nicely that you these are my true positive these are my true negative and false positive false negative and everything is coming so if you don't want to use that right Another important point uh, that here I'm already calculating false positive and false negative. So in the previous case, which we have seen in our COVID example, in our COVID example that uh, we are having this uh, Y2 and Y pred. And if I want to calculate our uh, false positive rate, which is type one error rate, what we have to do, we have to always sum up uh, the false positive divided by false positive plus two negative and it is 0 0.4 and here if we see FPR, if we check in this function, FPR is coming 40%. So we are already getting 40%, right? Similarly, false negative rate uh, and we can get the false negative rate as well. And if you see at the very top uh, that what we have discussed in uh, very beginning of this plot, that uh, if you have a balanced data set, we can use confusion matrix, we can print accuracy, we can fill false negative rate and false positive rate. So we have covered all four, three, all four uh, metrics uh, within this uh, particular section. And in the next part of the video, uh, part two of this, uh, we'll be talking about imbalanced data set. Thank you.